Let me teach you a word this morning that, you know, I, I feel that this is going to bless you. But I, again, this is going to be a little bit of a basic. I have I've taught this before, but let's journey again one more time on this topic. Amen. Let's begin with Luke chapter 11 and verse 1. Let me just give you a context to this story. Jesus, he's been journeying with his disciples for a very long time now. And wherever he journeyed, there was life that flew out of Jesus. There was great power that manifested out of Jesus. There was great revival grace that manifested out of Jesus. Great light that manifested from and through Jesus. But when the disciples, when they have been observing Jesus, they didn't ask Jesus the key to do miracles. They didn't ask Jesus the key to preach great sermons. They didn't ask Jesus, how should we do mission work or how, how can we be a blessing to so many people or how can we help young people? No, no, none of those questions. The only question that they asked Jesus is this. They said, teach us how to pray. That, that gives us so much, that speaks so much about what the disciples saw is the reason for Jesus' power, the secret to Jesus' power, the source of Jesus' power. They are seeing their master live a kind of a lifestyle and the disciples are saying, we want to imitate the secret behind this lifestyle. We want to know the power, the source of this power. So will you please teach us to... Let's read that. One, two, three, go. The book of Luke chapter 11 and verse 1. Once again, Jesus was in a certain place. And what was he doing? Jesus was praying. So as he was praying, I'm sure all his disciples gathered around him. They didn't want to disturb Jesus. But they gathered around him to observe what Jesus was praying. How Jesus was praying. His passion in prayer. His desire for God. His desire for God's presence. They all observed Jesus very carefully. And when he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his... Wait a minute. John also did the same thing. So it was not Jesus alone who taught his disciples to pray. John, the great baptizer, the great revivalist, the great, uh, you know, man of God, the great prophet that would make a way for the Lamb of God, for Jesus to come. One of the things that he did was also to teach his disciples to pray. How to pray what to pray, what not to pray, what to avoid in your pursuit of God. Because if you can get this thing right, the rest of your life, you will do well. And again, this was not a teaching that was meant for the masses. This was a teaching that was meant for the disciples. John taught his disciples. Now Jesus is teaching his disciples. Jesus is saying, this is how you should pray. See, a lot of things that the disciples came to ask Jesus. Jesus would, you know, really not give them a direct answer. Like one point they said, ah, oh, I wish we have faith for this. And Jesus was like, what do you mean? Even if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, it, this is not a big deal. You don't need a massive faith. You just need faith as small as a mustard seed. Another point they came to Jesus and said, who, who among us is the greatest, the most important? Who can sit on the VIP seat? And Jesus said, what do you mean by that? The least among you is the greatest. So don't pursue this. So most of the things that these guys asked Jesus, Jesus never gave a direct reply. But here is the first and the only thing that they asked. That Jesus said, okay, this requires an answer. This requires a revelation. Let me open up prayer to you. And so Jesus said, verse 2, this is how you should pray. Come on, read it with me. Father... May your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. In other words, Jesus taught them to pray in a way that John didn't teach them to pray. Because nobody could make a way to the Father except Jesus. Because Jesus came to not only really open the way, but also to show the way 
for these guys to now go to the Father. And so in teaching them how to pray, Jesus was teaching them the way to the Father's heart. He was saying, when you pray, you pray like this, Father, may your name be kept holy and may your kingdom come soon. Verse 3, give us each day the food that we need. How many of you know that we need food? We need physical food. We need spiritual food. We need emotional food. We need uh, uh, provisions financially. We need provisions in our relationships. And, and here is Jesus teaching them to depend on the Lord for the food that they need for each day. Which means this dependence cannot be a, a one week or a one year, one year you know, thing. It has to be a daily dependence. It has to be, you cannot store up enough anointing for you know, an entire season. You can, you can definitely, you know, some anointing, some things that has been deposited into your life can take a whole season to manifest. That's different. But you can't wait on the Lord for one word on Sunday and hope that throughout the entire week, you will have all you need. No, no, no. Your dependence has to be daily. It has to be continual. And then he taught them to pray. Verse 4. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. And then Jesus brought a very, very important aspect to prayer. Where he taught them to deal with their spiritual issues too. Where he's telling them, hey, you need to let go of the ones that have sinned against you. And after you have let go of them in prayer, now you ask for your sins to be forgiven in the same way that you forgave that person's sin. So in other words, when you pray, you have to let go of certain offenses. You cannot pray with an offended heart. You cannot pray with a hurt. You cannot pray with, with you know, anger or jealousy or slander that is still growing on in your heart. When you are asking the Lord for forgiveness, you need to have first forgiven. And then he said, now that you have forgiven, now that you have received forgiveness, now pray that you will not give in, that you will not yield to temptation. Amen? We have studied the Lord's Prayer several times and, and we've, we've, we've dealt with this topic in detail. And I pray that we will learn the keys from this prayer, not just the prayer. All of us know the prayer by heart. But that we learn the keys from the prayer and we practice those keys in our pursuit of the Lord. But Jesus didn't finish with this prayer. He began to teach them how to manifest this prayer, how to activate this prayer, how to really receive answers when you pray. Because most of us pray, but not every, answer, every prayer gets answered. If all of our prayers get answered, there will be no parking space here, guys. If all of our prayers get answered, man, we, we would not be in this small building anymore. Yeah, you, you know, but the question is, why is all of our prayers not getting answered? Why is there a delay? Why is there a refusal? So Jesus now explains, gives more clarity to it, okay? Read verse 5. Then, teaching them more, everybody say more. more. So now Jesus is giving them more about prayer. So this was not what they asked. What they asked is, teach us how to pray, which Jesus already did. Jesus gave them the touch. Now he is giving them more than what they asked for. Amen? How many of you know that we serve a God who gives us exceedingly, abundantly more than we ask or think or imagine? So Jesus gave them more and he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight and you're wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. At midnight... Do you have friends like this? Or are you that friend? <laughs> then at midnight, you disturb other people. After they've gone to bed, after they've put their phone on DND, after, you know, you're not welcome. The Bible says in the next verse, you say to him, 
a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. So this guy is not looking for his provision. He's not going to his friend because he's hungry. He's going to his friend because his, his visitor, his, his guest is hungry. And he cannot let this guest go to bed hungry. So then he goes and knocks on the door of his neighbor saying, no, 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 I, you have to open the door for me. And he is knocking. And then verse 7. And suppose that friend, he calls out from his bedroom or probably sends you a message. You know, in our day, we don't have to call out, right? We just have to reply through text message, you know, and say, uh, you know, bro, don't bother me now. The door is locked for the night. You know, for those of you who don't know, back in the day, locking the door for the night is a process. It's, they have to put stones and, you know, they don't have these Godrej locks that we have right now, right? It's, it's, it's not as easy as it was back in the day, yeah? It says, don't bother me. The door is locked for the night and my family and I are in bed. So I, I can't help you. I'm sorry. This is, this, if you come back in the morning, if you come back at a convenient time, if you come back at a time when I would like to help you, I will. But not, not now. Right now, you're not my priority. If I get up, uh, my kids will get disturbed. This is, this is not the time when I want to do this. But the Bible says in the next verse, are you ready for this? This will give us keys. It says, but I tell you this, though he won't do it, for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking, somebody said long enough. If you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. Tell your neighbor, you got to be shameless today. Please understand, this is not my sermon. If you, if you want to throw stones at me, please don't do it at me. Jesus taught this, okay? This is Jesus teaching us. We are just, I'm just reading Jesus to you. Okay, so please don't think I'm making up something. This is Jesus saying, there are certain things that God may not answer you immediately because he is testing your shameless persistence. Because if you pray certain things and you give up praying after you prayed, then that shows that you are not really serious about that prayer. So there are certain prayers that God wants you to keep praying and praying and praying and praying and praying long enough. Everybody say long enough. Uh, and, and, and this has to be with a heart, with an attitude that is shameless. Where your shameless persistence is at display. That others can see. The, the Lord can see. The angels in heaven, they would say, Lord, please answer his prayer quick. If you don't answer his prayer now, we, you know, this, this guy is going to create a scene. We don't want to do it. Please, please do something. You know? and it says because of his shameless persistence. How many of you know that we have a relationship with our father? But yet the Bible says, not because of the sake of the relationship. Because certain prayers are not answered just because you utter words. Certain prayers are answered because the weight that is behind that words that you utter. How serious you are in pursuing those prayers. How serious you are in committing yourself to see these prayers be fulfilled. Amen? Amen? So Jesus says, yes, you need to pray. Yes, this is how you pray. And, and when you pray, you don't pray and give up. You pray long enough prayers. And you need to pray in certain way that, that, that there will be this demonstration of shameless persistence. And the next verse, read it loudly. One, two, three, go. And so I tell you, keep on asking. And you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be opened to you. So what Jesus is saying is, yes, you need to demonstrate your shameless persistence. Now this persistence also has various degrees. 
various level of aggression it doesn't stop with just asking there are certain things that don't come to you because you asked well and you asked long enough you need to go graduate from asking to seeking you know what you do in seeking you go and study why didn't i get what i asked for is there anything that i'm missing is there any areas anything that that god has put as a condition so you seek the word you seek man of god you seek for solutions you you seek for a different perspective and it says keep on seeking and you will find but let's say you didn't find after seeking then you need to start knocking because there are certain things that don't come with just nice gentle asking there are certain things that don't come because you've been you've been intellectual enough to seek every answers there certain things come because you you are now aggressive in your pursuit you're willing to knock down certain doors you're willing to keep knocking and knocking and knocking till the door is now opened to you who is teaching us this jesus says keep on asking then please don't let anybody come and tell you no 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 you 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 have to live with your sickness or you have to live with your lack this is just part of your life you know every it happens to everybody this is not a big deal let nobody tell you that you have to give up asking let nobody tell you you have to stop seeking let nobody tell you that you 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 don't have to be so aggressive in your knocking you have to keep on asking keep on seeking and you need to keep on knocking are you ready for the next line i i i i want to prepare your heart are you ready for the next one come on read it loudly okay Eighty percent people, ninety percent people. Come on, this is God's word, eh? This is Jesus who is promising. Who is this promise for? Everyone, every single one. There is nobody in this roof, under this roof, in this room, that is exempt from this. Everyone. Look at your neighbor and tell them that includes you. You are everyone too. You are part of this everyone. This this promise is for everyone. It says everyone who asks receives and everyone who seeks come on loudly and everyone who knocks one more time and everyone who asks and everyone who seeks and to everyone who knocks one more time for everyone who asks and everyone who seeks and everyone who knocks amen? amen verse 11 now we are getting to the crux of this message are you ready for this it says you fathers if your children ask for a fish do you give them a snake instead do you give them a snake instead what would you give them you wouldn't just give them fish you would make a nice meal Yeah you would uh, prepare different kinds of fishes you would make sides you would you would add some mutton to it you you would you would put some beef you, you it's not just going to be a nice only a fish if you ask for fish i'll just give you, you will exceed what they ask for yeah your fathers you how many of you fathers are there or how many of you have fathers that have provided for you what 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 did how do they do that they they, they don't just give you what you ask for especially the ones that are your basic needs i know my kids are going to hold this against me after service they i i don't know how they you know when i look at them from the stage it doesn't look like they're paying attention oh my god but they seem to remember everything and they hold me up to that standard later you know guys i'm talking about your needs not your wants okay just this only for them If you need a fish your father he doesn't give you a snake instead next line it says if you ask for an egg do you give them a scorpion of course not you 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 will you 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 will 
make a nice breakfast with not just eggs with bacon with baked beans everything the whole package is there right now are you ready for your heavenly father it says so if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children how much more will your heavenly father give the holy spirit to those who ask him wait a minute that that that's not what i was thinking about lord i was saying i want a car you know that can go from 0 to 100 in 3 seconds yeah but why will the why will why will my father give me holy spirit what i want is not holy spirit what i want is a car what i want is not the holy spirit what i want is a, a rent free house what i want is a better promotion a better job what i want is a healing what i want is a breakthrough in this you know in this relationship whatever it is I, what i want is a blessing why will the father give me the holy spirit because by giving you the holy spirit he is exceeding your asking let me make this statement pay very att- very close attention to this okay the holy spirit is the answer to all your prayers let me say it one more time the gift of the holy spirit the giving of the holy spirit is the single answer to every prayer we pray everything we ask everything we seek everything we knock for the answer is same the answer is the person of the holy spirit when when god sees that you're asking for a car what god does is he gives you the holy spirit and now because you have the holy spirit you have the ability to get yourself a car you have the ability to open certain doors that are shut for you now there is nothing that is impossible for you because you have the power that created heaven and the earth living inside of you the same power that raised christ from the dead see every time we come to pray and we are saying lord do this do this do this you know what god does god fills us with his holy spirit god gives us a fresh infilling of his presence a fresh infilling of his holy spirit and when he does that we go back with a new revelation of what is possible with our relationship with god a new revelation of what is possible with this human body with this human a uh, limited self of ours god gives us a revelation of what we can do and i pray that today we will not limit our answered prayers to say oh i got a job or praise god if you got a job praise god if you got a blessing but that 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 is not the ultimate answered prayer the ultimate answered prayer is a fresh infilling of the holy spirit and i pray everyone everybody say everyone. everyone everyone in this place will receive a fresh infilling today yes. and again the 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 holy spirit he is a person and yet he is a river you can have more of him you can have a different stream that you've not had till now you can discover a new personality a new revelation a new side a new facet of this holy spirit that you've not discovered till now see when when john encounters god in heaven he sees seven spirits you know all we know is uh, holy spirit holy ghost spirit of god like you know or, i don't know what are the six seven <laughs> names we have but john he he sees seven individual revelations of the holy spirit he doesn't write it down for us but that it is available for us to tap into i pray that some of you will see more than seven years yeah. some of you will you will encounter the holy spirit in a way that 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 your life will change so then if you if you understand this the goal of our prayer has to change the goal of our prayer is not to feel light some of us pray just to vent right yeah the goal of our prayer is not to you know 
like force God's hand to do something for us. The goal of our prayer is to open up the vessel that you and I are to receive an infilling, an impartation, a baptism of the Holy Spirit. And God doesn't answer your prayers. You answer your own prayers. <laughs> the Holy Spirit in you now begins to work through your words, through your hands, through your feet, through your eyes, through your ears. You answer your own prayers. You become the answer. Why? Because now you have the Holy Spirit in you. I, I'd like to repeat this statement that I made a, a while ago. Holy Spirit, the gift of the Holy Spirit is the answer to all our prayers. I didn't say 30% or 50%, all our prayers. You want healing? The Lord will give you the Holy Spirit. You know why? Because He wants to exceed what you ask for. Because if He just gives you healing, you'll have to keep coming back. But if He gives you the Holy Spirit, if He gives you the key, if He gives you a person to be with you always, giving you direction, guidance, practical help, expertise in overcoming this sickness, now you will never fall sick. Now you will, now you will overcome this for your entire life. You will live as an overcomer. Wow. Acts chapter 1 verse 4. The Bible says once, this is after the resurrection, once when he was eating with them. Some of the good things happen when Jesus was eating food with them. So, yeah, just leaving it out there. Uh, eating with them, he commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father, until the Father sends you the gift. He's a person, but he's also a gift. He's a person, but he's also a and this is a gift that is promised not just for few people, but for everybody that asks. Everybody that asks. If you being evil fathers, you wouldn't give a snake for a fish or a scorpion for an egg. My good heavenly father, what he does is he gives the gift of the Holy Spirit to everybody. So Jesus says, now this is what you need to do. You need to find the location that I'm telling you. There is a specific location. You, 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 anywhere outside this location, this will not work. You know, this, to, for this to happen, you have to be in this location. You cannot go back to Galilee. You cannot go to Nazareth. You, can, you, you can't go on a mission trip. No, no, no. Right now, you have to stay in Jerusalem. I'm giving you a specific address. The problem with us is that we are on the move all the time and we are... We, we, we are not where God wants us to be and we are wondering why is my prayer not being answered? Because God gave you an address to receive the answer to your prayer. I'm not talking about Old Testament. This is New Testament now, guys. Okay? See, I understand some of you think that in the Old Testament address was important. In the Old Testament, Jerusalem was... Why did Jesus ask them to stay in Jerusalem? Can't, can't they pray in... in Samaria? Couldn't they have prayed in Judea? Like, what's the speciality of praying in Jerusalem? Why do they have to pray in Jerusalem? But Jesus says, no, no, no. Don't leave Jerusalem till the gift arrives. Because the gift has an address to it. The gift has a location marked to it. A location marked to it. And, and if you... If you are outside that location, no matter how hardly you are praying, how, how crazy, how much you are seeking and knocking and, you know, standing upside down, falling, you know, head over heels, doing all your chanting and praying, nothing will change. Because the gift will come to that location. Gift will come to that location. And that is why even when you come to church, your, your location, where you are seated even in church matters, yeah? Because there, there, there are certain things that we do out of revelation. Not, not out of obligation. But we do it out of revelation. We want to be as close to the altar as possible. We want to be as close to the voice as possible. This, this, am I saying that you can't receive more sitting in the back? No. I'm just saying that when we, when we come into the presence of God, we, we don't want to try and leave a gap. We don't want to try and leave a 
a, a space. If we, if we can, we, we try and get as close as possible. We, we know that this anointing, it falls in a location, in an address. And we have to figure out that address. We have to be in that place. When it is coming, when it is happening, when it is being released, we don't miss that space. We don't miss that place. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Most of you know this by heart and I'm going to read it again. But you will receive, loudly, you will receive. When the Holy Spirit comes upon you, what do you receive? You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So all the, the goodness that God wants to give you, He has packaged it. The power, the provision, the blessings, He has packaged it in the person of the Holy Spirit. So only and only when you're filled with Him, do you receive the power. See, the problem with so many of us is that we have tapped into some power because of some principles that we have. You know, if you know that power can also manifest for you because you understand certain principles for which you don't actually need the person. And that is why a lot of worldly people can make more money than Christians. A lot of worldly people can be more successful than Christians because they, they have tapped into a power because of certain principles that they activate. But guys, we are not talking about that power. We are talking about the power that comes from the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Spirit, you receive power. And this power will now enable you to be my witnesses. Telling people everywhere about me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. You know, my, my, my hunger is that in this next season, we would, we would become radical in evangelizing. Please, please, let's... And again, again, let me, let me just clear my heart in this. I'm, I'm trying to, to be very, very vulnerable before you guys. I'm not saying this because we need to fill the chairs in the new building. I'm saying this because we need to get our people to heaven. So it's okay if they don't come to our church, but, but, but we have to still be witnesses. And the ability, the power to do witnessing comes from the person of the Holy Spirit. It comes as an answer to our prayers. When we pray, we get filled. And when we get filled, we go and preach, we go and teach, we go and demonstrate, we go and live a life in certain way that now Jesus is at display for people to imitate through our lives. Amen? Acts chapter 1 and verse 12. What did the apostles do? It says, then the apostles, why? Because they knew there is a location, there is a specific location that they need to go to so that they can receive from the Lord. It says, then the apostles, they returned to Jerusalem from the Mount of Olives. It was just uh, the distance of half a mile. It says, they all met together and were constantly united in prayer along with Mary the mother of Jesus and several other women and the brothers of Jesus so the apostles they never in their when Jesus was on the earth they didn't really get along with the mother the brothers and the sisters of Jesus you know the story yes or no there was like a divide between the physical family of Jesus and the spiritual family of Jesus. This, this, the physical family of Jesus didn't always have access to where Jesus was teaching, where Jesus was living, where Jesus was ministering. But on the cross, Jesus told John, John, now sh she's coming to you. She has, it's not because Jesus didn't have brothers. By the way, Jesus had brothers. James was one of them. He had brothers who could take care of him. But what Jesus was doing on the cross was not just making sure that somebody would pay Mary's medical bills. What Jesus was making sure on the cross was that there will be uh, this divide between the physical and the spiritual family of Jesus will be connected. Now, the Bible says they all met together and were what? Constantly what? 
united in prayer because see you should understand this the the physical family of jesus they have a particular revelation of jesus that they have seen from age 0 to 30 the spiritual family of jesus they have a different revelation of jesus from age 30 to 33 and everybody is boasting saying i i know him better you don't uh, you you're thinking he is you know, i know him better you i saw him raise that you know small girl with the other other guy is saying no 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 but i saw him you know play in my backyard we did it together i i i can test to his character he's a sinless guy in the most tempted time she, he he was still 100% sinless i know a side of jesus you guys have not seen that that's the, that's what the physical family is saying but but there had to come a time when the physical and the spiritual family becomes one and the bible says they they were united in prayer it says the mother of jesus the other woman and even the brothers of jesus they all came together and they prayed and they prayed and they were praying and they were praying and they were praying so can, can i can i right now call for a for a oneness in this church I know that all of us have some of the other reason to disagree with somebody right I don't agree with your hairstyle I don't agree with your dressing sense I don't agree with your language I don't agree with your you know whatever you know give me some names I'll know what is what is bothering you <laughs> Nobody nobody wants to be vulnerable Nobody wants to be honest What what is bothering you please tell me Anything that is bothering you nothing okay because the person is sitting right next to you <laughs> you just don't want to talk about them without but you know as much as we have disagree disagreements and difference of opinions when we come together for prayer can we come can we come in oneness because jesus said when two people on earth not 20 not 200 but two people on earth they agree on one thing concerning what they ask your father in heaven will do it for them do you know how how powerful it is when a husband and a wife they agree on one thing and they pray that will tell you why there are so many disagreements in marriage because because the enemy knows that if they will agree and pray man everything is going to be possible for these guys church what will happen if 100 of us we agree and we pray for an impartation of the holy spirit for a infilling of the holy spirit what will happen if 100 of us we we set aside our preferences of of who should lead prayer and how they should lead and and what they should pray and but can we take it to the next level can we lay aside certain differences that bring in disunity no 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 you and i we cannot be the reason for disunity in this church you shall not be the cause for division in this church you shall not be the cause in fact you will be a peacemaker you will be the one to unite to unite the physical and the spiritual to unite what is broken and the one that is whole you will unite them you will unite the honorable with the dishonorable you you will bridge the gap in the church you know when when you see somebody is fighting somebody doesn't like somebody you don't go and add fuel to the fire you don't go and say ah i also noticed <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. I, i wanted to tell you this but i i i mean what is this yeah not cool at all this is not cool and and you add more ghee right you just you just say you know i saw i heard pastor was also rebuking that guy you know instead if you turn around to say wow i i understand let's let's journey with this guy you know let's Let, let let me go talk to him let me see if there is something that i'm not seeing if it's just a miscommunication a misunderstanding let me go talk to him guys everything can be cleared out in conversations yeah the enemy doesn't want you to talk the enemy doesn't want you to open it up the enemy doesn't want you to bring it to the light he just wants you to hide it and keep it under the carpet and as long as you keep it under the carpet the problem will keep growing and growing and growing but today if you're bothered approach somebody and talk about it if somebody is hurting you in church talk about it we will figure out a solution because what we are pursuing together as a church it is so valuable 
that this small hurt, it, 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 it cannot stand in the way of that. It shouldn't stand in the way. Oh, I'm telling you, we, we, we are giving too much importance to too less problems. Because what God wants to give us is so valuable. We have to lay down all these hiccups that we have. Again, I, please understand, I'm not, I'm not saying that your problem is not important or that you don't have a real problem. You know, for you, this hurt may be really personal and, and it may be hurting you deeply. I understand that. But we have godly leaders that God has given us. And we can, we, if, if you need healing, we can talk about it. If you need to find healing in a conversation with somebody, we can talk about it. And we can try and facilitate that. But we cannot compromise the unity. Read it one more time. Then all of them, they met together and were constantly united in prayer along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and several other women and the brothers of Jesus. Amen? The next verse, it says, During this time, loudly, during this time, when about 120 believers were together in one place, Peter stood up and addressed them. You know what did he address? He said, guys, we have one guy missing. We were 12 apostles when Jesus called us, but now we are only 11. So we need to fill the gap. There is a breach in this gang. There is a gap in the wall. We need to fix the breach in the wall. So, what am I teaching you? I'm teaching you how to prepare for this Holy Spirit, for the coming of the Holy Spirit. One, you need to be in the right location. Second, you need to make sure you're united with one another. That there is absolutely no cause for disunity and disagreement. Third, Peter, before the Holy Spirit could come down, he stood up. So these guys, they have been constantly united in prayer and nothing happened because there was still a breach there was still something missing. There was still somebody that had to be replaced. So Peter stood up and he addressed the elephant in the room. Guys, I know nobody wants to take his name, but let me, let me just say this. We had a Judas. He has left us or he has left a hole in the wall. He has he is broken our hearts. We are all hurt. Now we need to fix this. Let's come together to fits the breach let's come together to rebuild that particular that part of the wall and they appointed somebody to replace judas now i don't know it's it's not like this matthias i i don't know you know theologians say that he he did a lot of work but in the in the in the, in the book of acts you don't hear his name again do you like i i don't know of anything that he has any letters that he has written nothing nothing specific and yet it was so critical that this place of Judas be filled by someone else before the Holy Spirit. Because that's the last thing that happened before the day of Pentecost. You know, we are all blessed with Martin Luther who, you know, came and said, salvation is not by... I mean, it's not Martin Luther who said, it's Paul who said, but nobody read that part for 1600 years. Martin Luther just highlighted it. But what happened is everybody went into the other extreme saying, oh my God, no more works. No more works. In fact, Martin Luther also went to a little extra. In his translation of the Bible, he avoided writing, he avoided translating the book of James. You know why? Because James says faith without works is dead. So when he translated the book, the Bible into German, he didn't translate the book of James. Can you imagine that? And, and I think that so many of us, we have, we've just underestimated the power of, of closing the breaches in the wall. And we are praying day and night. And we are seeking day and night. And we are knocking day and night. And we are wondering, why is it that nothing is changed? Nothing is happening. Isn't it all by grace? Don't I believe? Don't, am I not in the right church? Am I, am I not united? What is wrong? It's because there are still some breaches, some gaps in the wall that need to be filled before we can experience Pentecost once again. This morning, I've, I've not come to excite you. I've come to teach you. 
I have strategically prepared a word, a word that I believe we need for this season. None of these are things that you don't know. And yet I am bringing it to you as a reminder that we need to fix certain areas of our life if you really want to walk in a season of answered prayers. Answered prayers. You know, the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, He is the manifestation of the goodness of God. Let me rephrase it. The Holy Spirit is a revelation of the Father's goodness. Because Jesus said, you being evil fathers, sinful fathers, know how to give good gifts to your children. Then how much more will our Father in heaven, who is good, who is perfect, who is sinless, how much more the heavenly Father will give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him. So this person of the Holy Spirit, this infilling, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, it is a manifestation. It is a revelation of the Father's goodness. When we receive the Holy Spirit, we are receiving from the Father's goodness. We are receiving a demonstration, a revelation of the Father's goodness. And yet, these these are things that we need to put into place. We need to be shameless in our persistence. We need to ask, seek, knock. Let's quickly revise what we learned. eh? What did did we start with? Prayer is the... I taught you that. The disciples, they saw Jesus and they saw the key to power was... The key to His power was... Prayer. What's the next thing? Persistence is the key... To answer prayer, everybody say persistence. Read it with me. Persistence is the key to answer prayer. The third thing, asking, seeking and knocking are various degrees of persistence. So your persistence cannot, cannot just be asking. It cannot just be seeking. But you keep on growing okay, in your, in your pursuit of God. Next slide. This promise is for come on loudly this promise is for have we proved that from scripture today the promise of asking seeking and knocking is not for 30 percent believers not for newcomers alone not for those who have been in church for 10 years it's for everyone the holy spirit ah this is my favorite point from this morning the holy spirit he is the answer for every prayer Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit, He is the demonstration of the Father's goodness. Because people who have, people can give good gifts to their children, even though they are evil in nature. But this good Heavenly Father, when He gives us the Holy Spirit, he, it's a demonstration of His goodness. It's, and He gives a good gift to His children. The Holy Spirit, He is the gift that is promised by the Father. The power that we receive, it is the result of the Holy Spirit's filling. The location, the address that we are at, it is important to receive this answer, to receive this Holy Spirit. And and the, and the last two points, we have to be united. It requires agreement and oneness. And we have to address any gaps or breaches. Fill those gaps and breaches before we can go ahead. Amen? Can I finish by reading a few scriptures? Acts chapter 2 verse 1. On the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Verse 4. Let's jump to verse 4. And, and, loudly, and, one more time, and, so this gift is for, it says, And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began speaking in other languages as the Holy Spirit gave them this ability. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, comes power. And they began speaking. And they began releasing their abilities, that grace, they began releasing it. Amen. And, and you would see, this is not the only time this happened. Every time they gathered for prayer. Let me give you one more instance. Acts chapter 4, verse 24. When they heard the report 
all the believers lifted their voices together in prayer to God. O sovereign Lord, creator of heaven and earth, the sea and everything in them. Jump to verse 31. It says, after this prayer, the meeting place shook and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. And what did they do? They went back home and slept. They retired. They went on a vacation. No, 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 no. Because they were filled in the Holy Spirit, now they went and they preached. They lived. They demonstrated the word of God with boldness. Boldness. The Holy Spirit is the answer. Is the answer to all our prayers. All our prayers. When we pray, He fills us with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to finish with the same scripture that Pastor Sijo released last Sunday from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 onwards. I, I, didn't, I didn't put the verse before this, but the verse before this says, don't be lazy. Okay? Will you remember that? What does it say? So, so in this three more days we have, what am I asking you to do? Don't be lazy. If you have work, I understand. If you have things that you can't avoid, I can understand. But don't let laziness be the reason to skip. Okay? Let's read verse 16. It says, Rejoice. Look at your neighbor and say, Rejoice always. Well, another neighbor, look at him and say, Rejoice always. Even when people hurt you, even when I don't like it, even when I'm sad, what do we do? We rejoice and we rejoice always. Yes, not only on your birthdays, but the other 364 days of the year too. Verse 17, it says, pray. Some of us, we just, we just pick this up. We don't read the verse before that. Because praying without ceasing is as important as rejoicing always. Rejoicing always is as important as praying without ceasing. I, I believe you have a revelation of prayer today. Shameless persistence without ceasing. Keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. Verse 18, and give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So please don't Touch me asking, Pastor, what is God's will? I'm giving you a Bible verse too. To just settle this once and for all. Should I marry him or should I marry him? I'll tell you what is God's will. Give thanks in. So whether you marry him or you marry him. In all circumstances, what do you do? You give thanks. Because that is God's will for you. Okay, I have, I have people who have, you know, who have like reached out to me, taken a full-fledged appointment with me. Uh, you know, they will schedule, you know, my, my mentorship meetings, my calendar is like sometimes booked for a month in advance. And some people, they, they will book my calendar one month in advance and they will schedule a meeting just to come and ask me, which car should I buy? I'm like... Pastor Jojo recently bought a car. Right? Let, me, let me redirect you to him. He's the right person. To... I'm, I'm not the guy to give you car advice. They want to know what is God's will regarding the car I should... Please, please don't waste mentorship appointments. Come, if, you, if you're taking mentorship appointments, I have very little time in this season. If you're coming for mentorship, please come seriously for mentorship. Not to find out the will of God for your life. Yeah? Come if you want to learn and be trained and be discipled. Yeah? The Bible says this is God's will for you. It is that you give thanks in every and all circumstances. Read the next line. It's very important. Verse 19. Do not quench the spirit. You know what happens when you do? The first three things that's rejoice always to pray without ceasing and to give thanks in all circumstances is that the Lord will begin to answer your prayer with the Holy Spirit and so when the Holy Spirit comes do not quench do not stifle another language it says do not 
do not give way for the presence of the holy spirit to be to be you know you know how sometimes we put water on the candle to blow it out that's what the that's what the bible is saying do not quench the spirit do not quench because when we are praying we are when we are giving thanks and when we are rejoicing always we are making way for the holy spirit we are giving door we are giving room for more and more of this river to flow and at that time please don't shut the door please don't say something that is going to quench the spirit again next line it says do not despise prophecies it says do not despise that's the last thing i'm not saying you should you should receive everything but do not despise okay some things you don't receive it's okay if somebody comes and says i see the lord wants to give you a lot of sicknesses and and pain and there will be a lot of you know debt that you don't receive but again don't despise yeah i'll tell you this is what the next verse says verse 21 but test everything how will you test everything you you know on sundays you you been taught solid doctrine in the church yeah you will go back and and check the notes of what you wrote down on sunday does this fall in line with what i've been taught does this test 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 the word you know even on friday we so many pro, so many people prophesied and all everybody prophesied right everybody prophesied to almost everybody don't despise but test test and see what is good it says hold fast to what is good when you see what is good when you sense what is good when you when when your spirit begins to affirm with that you know connect with that then hold fast to it don't just ah yes amen forget no 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 hold fast to it stand upon it wage your spiritual warfare based on the prophecy that was given to you next verse abstain from every form of evil every appearance of evil not even the looks of evil even it, it may not be evil but it may just appear like evil abstain from it scripture says okay he says all this and then he releases the blessing are you ready for it please stand and let, let me just read this scripture as a blessing over you this morning verse 23 lift up your hands to the lord and as you do this as you rejoice always as you pray without ceasing as you give thanks in every circumstances and as you grow in your in your revelation of the holy spirit and you don't stop the holy spirit you don't quench the holy spirit as you grow in your revelation of how to how to really on the prophecy is coming to you how to abstain from every form of evil now may the god of peace i'm talking about a god of peace who is bringing peace into your home i'm talking about a god of peace who is bringing peace into your relationships i'm talking about a god of peace who is bringing divine alignment and order in your life now may the god of peace himself I speak this over you may he sanctify you completely Somebody said I receive I receive may he sanctify you completely One more time may he sanctify you completely I receive and may your whole spirit and soul and body not just your spirit not just your soul but even your body your soul your your whole spirit your soul and your body be kept blameless may it be kept faultless may it be kept sinless may it be kept free of sicknesses may it be kept free of any lack May you be sanctified because now the Holy Spirit he comes he comes to fill you your whole spirit your soul and your body to sanctify you 100% And when Jesus comes back may you be found sanctified may you be found ready at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ